Take less, get more. It sounds like a paradox, but it's actually the rationale behind an investment opportunity that gives me hope for our oceans. If you've heard about the sea recently, it was probably bleak news. Fish stocks collapsing, ocean acidification, mass extinction. But there is a grassroots movement out there with a different story to tell. It's a story that begins with a breathtakingly simple device for rebuilding fisheries. I'm talking about marine reserves. Think of a marine reserve as a natural investment bank within which we protect our stock, our investment from fishing. Fish grow and spawn inside, accumulating with interest. Eventually, there's so much life inside the reserve that pioneers start to venture beyond its boundaries, spilling into our fishing nets outside. And ultimately, that interest, that's the pioneers spilling over, may exceed our initial savings deposit, the fish that were in there to start with. That's all because of one of the great wonders of the natural world. As fish grow, their fertility explodes in a very non-linear way. So modest growth leads to a colossal leap in fertility. The longer we leave fish in the reserve, the bigger they grow, and the bigger they grow, the more their fertility soars, giving us a surge in fish and larvae that spill out of our reserve to replenish our fishing grounds year after year indefinitely. Now, these returns are so effective that if we can scale up protection to around a third of our oceans, we're in with a chance of rebuilding fish stocks worldwide. But two problems stand in our way of meet meeting that 30% target. Firstly, our seas are now so depleted that interest rates start low. And where fishing means survival, as for these nomadic Vezu people in the Mozambique Channel, the opportunity cost of waiting for that dividend is simply not a viable option. Secondly, we have a scale problem. Today, we're fully protecting less than 1% of our seas. We need a radically new approach to the way we incentivize and finance marine conservation to fund that 30-fold expansion of protection that we need to safeguard our seas. And I've spent the last 14 years here in the Indian Ocean looking for one. It just so happens that some species can recover phenomenally quickly with protection, like this tropical octopus that grows at exponential rates. Octopus gleaned on coral reefs here in Madagascar are exported all the way to Europe, one species underpinning an entire coastal economy, in a place where fishing is the only job on offer, where fishing is survival. A decade ago, catches here were starting to collapse. The outlook wasn't good. One village decided to set aside a small area of the reef where they normally catch octopus for just a few months to see what would happen. Now, I want you to imagine that you're a Malagasy fisherwoman, used to landing octopus under a kilo. On a good day, your whole family might catch five kilos, fetching you two or three dollars to feed seven people. Now, imagine how it feels when you pull a bigger octopus out the water, not two, or even three times the usual size. Imagine an octopus ten times the size, at eight kilos. People saw and people talked. Soon neighbors were replicating this model, and in a decade it's gone viral along hundreds of miles of coast. It's growing every year. It spawned new fishing legislation, crossed international borders, and is now being adopted to other fisheries in the Indian Ocean. This model yields real monetary profits with a monthly internal rate of return of 92%, exceeding any financial product on the market. So these guys are earning more from fishing less. But this isn't conservation, this is fisheries management. We weren't doing this for conservation, but to improve food security in a place where over half of children are malnourished. But in the process, people saw what was possible that they themselves could rebuild their fisheries. And now something quite remarkable is happening. Following this model, these same villages have started raising the bar, creating permanent marine reserves within vast locally managed conservation areas. In just eight years, 63 of these areas have been established around the coast of Madagascar alone. This is a local marine conservation revolution being driven not by government, but by communities, and now on a scale exceeding one and a half million football pitches around the Western Indian Ocean. 
village by village, we're, we're learning that conservation doesn't need to be about taking less because it can be one of the highest yielding investment opportunities on the planet. It's already working for a quarter of a million people here in Madagascar, and this is just the beginning. One and a half billion of us live around our tropical coasts, including some of the world's poorest people dependent on our richest, yet most threatened marine biodiversity. My mission is to help more of us learn from pioneers like Madagascar's octopus fishers that taking less from our oceans really does give us much, much more. Thank you.